what is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here bringing you guys a cool little Photoshop tutorial here today bringing you guys a cool little thumbnail video I had to have about three or four requests on like you know last week on how to make a nice little thumbnail or whatever I know I understand why here's the example that I have here just for now uh, just a nice quick example right it was like a really nice easy simple design that just pops out out of you know other people's thumbnails and like sub box and such of course like the new hype of the games like Call of Duty or whatever or next year's games or whatever um, thumbnails are definitely gonna bring you guys up of course so of, of course like new video games new content new people who want to watch you maybe you never know so yeah thumbnail videos here today I will probably put a whole bunch of other uh, thumbnail videos that I have like on my channel uh, if you guys want to choose out some more different styles or some really cool effects I would work with the thumbnails I will do that for you guys or maybe I'll make a playlist I really don't know a playlist sounds like a good idea uh, so yeah, don't forget to check out the description down below, and do not forget, guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below. We've been, like, real, like, I don't know, it's been, you guys have been, I, I really, really appreciate the views and such. You guys have been, like, killing it with the views and all that crazy stuff. Don't forget to leave a like, guys. It really, really does help me out. Helps the channel out. Just helps me, like, you know, stick with my motivation of uploading more than once a week. Uh, please do so. Uh, so yeah, for this Monday upload, I thought we would do some thumbnails, like I said. So let's get going right away. Um, pretty much, you can see what I have here. It's nothing crazy, you know, out of, you know, whatever. It's just a really nice simple two-tone uh, color with nice and light. Uh, I don't know how to, what would you call this gr blue or green? Um, this is green, right? You would clarify this is green. I would hope so. Um, like green and bluish color, right? Like, I don't know, like a teal? I have no clue. I should really, you know, color theory for next year? Yeah. <laughs> I think I know what I'm taking in college. Anyway, cool. Let's get going. We're going to go ahead and start this off with a background layer, of course. So, of course, with your background layer, you want to have a gradient overlay. I already have my color set just because I want to show you guys how I did it. Um, it's a very simple gradient. Uh, basically, you want to change your style from whatever it is, which is probably going to be a linear default, uh, which is basically up down. Is what, what, what that means is basically your linear uh, gradient here. So up down is going to be from dark to light or whatever your uh, gradient is set to. Uh, we're going to change that to radial. This will make it to a circle. So basically, going to have like a nice, uh, you know, depending on the colors, of course. But for this example, I'm going to have a nice dark to light or light to dark or whatever. So the light, uh, the more the, the more of the vibrant colors in the middle, and it just like kind of like pulls out with the um, darker red on the outsides here. So that's what I'm going to have there uh, to get a nice little color. I would say just use, you know, find a color or whatever, right? I have this red that I'm using. It is BA2F3E for the hex code. And then basically what I did was I just took that same exact color on the second one. But then just drag it down a bit, all maybe about like, I don't know, like a little above halfway down, right? And that way it gave me more, a more of a darker color that kind of worked perfectly to blend them together and make it look like a really nice, uh, just really overall nice color, right? So it's a really nice gradient. I used to do this with using like a, a, a one solid color and I'll make a new layer and then make like a, a white brush. Uh, that's how I usually do it. But I just figured out how easy gradients are to use. I don't know why I never used them from beforehand. Uh, like before like you know previous projects and such and tutorials but hopefully you guys get it I hope you guys have been using gradients and not a lot of you know what I showed before um so yeah all right cool so we're gonna do start we're gonna start this off by doing some really cool I don't know we're gonna do something like this we'll start this off by doing this little cool little like a uh, this little lip thing here with this like nice little cool little cut here I don't know just give them more the thumbnail more character and you can do these all around the spots I don't know it kind of pulls out of the uh, the white background since uh since YouTube is a white offset white background uh, anything with color anything with like uh, drop shadows or indentions like this look really really sick I don't know I just you know pick that up by just looking at people's sub boxes and such and I see like you know there's nothing really popping out but if you have indentions inside your thumbnail or whatever or inner shadows or drop shadows it looks really really cool um so yeah we're gonna start off with that so basically the way I did that was very very simple so I'm gonna take my pen tool right I'm gonna zoom out a bit with holding alt and scroll wheel out. I do have this set, uh, I'll probably put this in the description down below for you guys just in case you don't know, you don't know how to use rulers. Uh, to unhide and hide your rulers is control H. You will not get these unless you see what I just did is when I just took my rulers, right? And I kind of like, I'm just going to guess where the middle is here just to show you. But for like the first initial three rulers, uh, if you just drag them down and like kind of like snap where you would think halfway is, it will snap for you where halfway is on the canvas. And although I just guessed these two things or whatever, but you know, it's just a better way of keeping nice and clean and tight. So pretty much now I'm going to go ahead and I think, where did I have this ending? So like around the halfway mark. So I'm just going to make another layer here or another ruler here just because I want to make sure this is halfway, halfway. And then we will go ahead and I'll say about halfway in the between those, right? And then pretty much what I did was I just clicked and clicked over here. So there's only two clicks here. And then pretty much, I just clicked and dragged so I can extend these points. So what I did was, I'm going to just go over it because I know you guys really hate when I go fast or whatever. So I'm going to make sure I go over it again. I basically just clicked with the uh, with the, uh, the, the, geez, the pen tool 
and dragged uh, about to my like I guess bottom so I can get these extended points here I held control hold the control right now I'm clicking on this point I'm gonna move it to where I want it like just somewhere around like that I'll say that's pretty good I'm gonna hold alt this will allow me to select this point over here and also close the little loop because I just want to go around all the way around and then cl uh, close it now I have a closed path now on a new layer so over here you can press new layer or a control shift N for the shortcut and we'll right click fill this path in with doesn't matter what color it is I can just delete the path now right click delete the path now we have this little loop thing here right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower my fill all the way down to zero this will get rid of showing whatever's on this layer but also allow to keep any layer silence on the layer to be seen so pretty much now I can either take uh, inner shadow on the, like I can take inner shadow and just put the size up right the size up a bit I'll tear I'll turn off global uh, illumination I'll put this on 90 degrees uh, inner shadow or drop shadow which one does it really matter if I put it on like negative 90 degrees and then just put the size up oh no it has to be, does that be 90 maybe I don't know which one look better all right so we'll just do inner shadow it doesn't really matter inner shadow 100 degrees I turn off use global light and pretty much now I'm just gonna drag this about here what I can do though with this layer is just drag it down a bit so that black doesn't show on the outsides uh, that looks pretty clean looks really nice so far I'm just dragging it down more just because uh, we'll just keep it like there all right that doesn't look too bad no all right so cool I'll do the second one now so which is this one right here uh, this one's you know pretty simple as well all I got to do make a new layer always on a new layer I will go ahead and say I want this from here to like there uh, this is just what it just is just so I can put more character on the thumbnail and I just went all the way around so I clicked a nice little slant line here I went all the way around so that I can connect the point right click fill path uh, doesn't matter what color I use so I can just use whatever color I'm just gonna change it to gray for now uh, doesn't matter what color I use delete the path put my fill all the way down to zero double click on this and we'll use the inner shadow and maybe put it on negative 90 this time and we'll put the size up and this will work just like that and what I'm gonna do is just because I don't want an inner shadow around the entire thing I had to do the same thing for the example I'm gonna right click rasterize this layer and this will allow my layer to obviously I cannot go back to fix any of the uh, uh, any of the settings or whatever because I just rasterized the layer I just made a one clean layer one whole new layer again like it's a picture of some sort right but I can also take the eraser now and erase the outsides where I don't want this you know this inner shadow at and now we just have this cool little thing at the bottom I don't know it looks pretty cool or whatever if you want to put like maybe like if you have an episode series right uh, you can put the title of it here like the the out like if you're doing uh, like Call of Duty commentary or whatever like you know I don't know like Call of Duty commentary and then like episode 5 or something like that you can have that in this box here it isn't crazy big but it's just good enough for like subtext or whatever um, other than that that's pretty good uh, pretty good we'll just go ahead and just put uh, creating we'll bring this box up if you don't have this box up just go to uh, uh, window and then character this is what this is it's the window characters and this is gonna bring this little A up here. It will probably be hidden over here for you guys. I I pulled mine out already, like of the thing. It usually would be right here. Click on it, but I can just pull it out just like so. I always use this. Uh, this is gonna actually separate your like you know your vertical or your horizontal spacing. I'm gonna put that back to zero really quickly though. I will use that in a second probably though. And the fonts, the two fonts that I use for my uh, thumbnails, uh, which is almost asked like, every single video, and I know how, but it's long shot. It's one of the good ones. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to be using, what is this, Ken I think it's called Kenyan Coffee, or Kenyan, yeah, I guess that, that'll work, right? Boom. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the middle, and since I have the spacing stuff, I will use it. And I'll put creating nice thumbnails again, uh, nice thumbnail designs, right? That's what I had before. Creating nice thumbnail, and then, oh. And by the way, how I'm doing this is that you can either press Control J to duplicate a layer, like over here. If you look over here, I have it selected. Control J to duplicate a layer, uh, to duplicate a layer. Or uh, if, I'm, if I'm on the movement tool and I use Alt and I just drag this down, it will duplicate for me. And there we go. Just like a nice quick way to do it. And then making nice, or what's said designs, right? And like if you want to mess around with fonts, uh, two fonts that look really good, like I just said, was Kenyan Coffee and a uh, Long Shot. I will use those right now. Uh, if you find your own two like really nice bold fonts that will, like pop out uh, nicely, uh, like Impact is a good one. That's like a default one though. Like if you just don't have any like fonts, you can use that or just go ahead and get uh, fonts from Defont.com. I think that's where I got these two. Um, other than that, you probably could just Google what the font name is and then just put like font download or something like that just to find them. Um, I will put my spacing up here though. 
Um, yeah, we'll do that. 250 maybe, right? Okay, I'll press OK. And then right now we have this set for us. And I'll probably just move this all together. So it's like more of in the middle. Uh, that'll do. Yeah, that'll do for now. And I can make it a little more smaller, but that's a, that's a pretty good fair size. It's not getting interrupted by this. Uh, looks pretty clean so far. Nothing's crazy going on. What I'm going to actually do, though, is make a quick CC for it. And I'm probably going to even change the color of it. And the way I'm going to do that is just go to my adjustment layers down here. I'm going to, like, brightness and contrast. Just quick, nice brightness and contrasts. And I'll also do... Actually, I'll just make these perfect numbers really quick. Or, like, more easy numbers to follow. So, negative 40. I have negative 45 brightness and 35 contrast on mine. I think that's what looks good. I have this, you know, the if you start with my color, maybe it would look good for you as well. Um, pretty much now, I'm going to go ahead and just go to curves as well. And I'll just make a nice little simple S curve. And what I'm going to actually do below the, the two CCs that I just made, so the, below these two uh, adjustment layers, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to use the brush. I'm going to actually make a nice little simple like target light right on the top. Just give that a little cool little thumbnail feel, right? I'm just going to load the opacity down to maybe about 30. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, just clicked again. All right, cool. So now we have this here. And now above the curve and the brightness and contrast, I will probably put a nice cool hue and saturation. Change the color. Um, sometimes this wouldn't always work, but for this, I think it's going to work. And I do like this blue here. We'll use that blue. We'll also try to find out, of course, when you put a hue and saturation on a color and it's not the original color, uh, what I can probably just do is just put this down here, right? Perfect. That solves my problem. I was just going to tell you because, of course, when you change a color, like I was going was to change this word thumbnail to a different color. Uh, if I wanted to change it to like the the green that I had before, right? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. If I wanted to change it to this cool green color like this, I guess that'll work for now. It's not the same one I had before. I had a really nice green. Ah, eh, that'll work. Whatever, right? But if you have a hue and saturation above this, it will change the color, and you're probably going to find yourself using the color purple to get to the color green. So just understand that if you want to just change a color, you can put the, uh, the the hue and saturation right below your um like your or just right above your background layer, just because that's where your color is coming from. Uh, other than that, it won't change your color, of course, when you change stuff. So what I'm going to do now is just something very simple. So right, I say right below your fonts and stuff, or right below your text. So this is my text. I'm going to group this all together. Right below it, I'm going to make another new layer. So with Control, Shift, N, shortcut, right? Press OK. Uh, makes a new layer for me. And with this layer, I'm going to take this M tool, which is the, the quick selection on your, you know, for your shortcut is M on your keyboard for the rectangle marquee tool, or it's your second tool right here to the left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically make a simple square, right? So I'm going to hold Shift. This will make a perfect square. If I don't, I'm going to be guessing. But if I hold Shift, it will automatically snap to a perfect square, and I can just automatically make a perfect square. So... What we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a simple, uh, probably like a mid-size square, so like something like this, right? And on this new layer, I'm gonna put this on any color right now. It doesn't really matter. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm just gonna put it on white, right? So I have all backspace for the quick fill on your foreground layer. Uh, all backspaces for the quick fill, or you can just right-click, fill, uh, select the color white if you wish to, if, the, if that's what you want to do. Um, so pretty much now, I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this a bunch of times, right? I'm actually gonna put this in a group really quickly. So with Control G to put in a group, and on this layer, I'm gonna select this layer. I'm gonna hold Alt. I'm just gonna go around and make a simple duplicate, just like this, just around the canvas. Uh, so about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little uh, squares around, right? In this group layer, I'm gonna group this again. Uh, this is just to keep everything tidy or whatever. I'm just gonna put that one. I'm gonna make an. Uh, I'm just gonna take this group right now. Control G or Control J to duplicate. And what I'm gonna do is I have these two separate groups, right? With two. Uh, sets of like seven squares or whatever. I'm gonna shrink one right with control T to free transform I'm gonna hold shift hold the corner here. I'm gonna shrink this corner down And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically do this over again I'm just gonna duplicate them with alt and we're just gonna make a simple Backing just like that right it looks cool just to have these little you know I can do it again and again and again if I want to make more little squares uh, or like making more like diverse and have like little squares and this size and then like this size or whatever if you want to but this is just nice and quick right now I have everything in one group here I'm just gonna duplicate this I'm gonna actually merge these together with control E and then just I'm just gonna call this backup for now because we have this it's all we want and we want to rationalize this layer that way we can put effects on it so we're gonna go to filter blur where is it filter blur motion blur and with this we're going to put it on a distance about, I think this is actually a pretty good distance, 165. We're going to press OK. 
And then pretty much with this, I'm going to put this on an overlay, right? It's going to give us this nice little blue. We're going to lower the opacity down a bit. And since I have this color green here, I want to make sure the backing also kind of matches with this green. So what I'm going to do, if you want to follow along with this kind of backing, I will have other videos that have different uh, other backings and such, but it looks really, really cool. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, control click on this here, on this thumbnail, which con uh, control clicking is basically taking the original shapes or whatever of the layer and taking, you know, like putting a, like a, making a selection of it, right? So with this, I'm going to go to select, modify, contract. Uh, contract by 10 pixels, which is obviously going to shrink this selection, right? So I know I made these squares beforehand. I told you to make those cool squares. And it's going to take the shapes that it sees in this layer, and it's going to shrink them by 10 pixels. So if I press OK, it's going to shrink it by 10 pixels. I'm going to hide this layer really quickly. So this is the layer that we're on right now, right? Uh, if I shrink it by 10 pixels and I press Delete, it will actually make a cool little, uh, you know, erase mark in the middle of it only and kind of give it a different look to it. Uh, which is obviously a different look than this one, which is just a flat, you know, like a cool little rectangle here. But this one has like a more of a, a distinct like looking uh, streak on the top and bottom, which that's what I want right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click on this new layer that we just did with the little cut inside, right? I'm going to color overlay. I'm going to select this green here. Press OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to either just, uh, uh, what did I have it on? I think I had it on overlay. Keep it on normal for now, maybe. Uh, let's see what looks good, to be honest. Let's just flip through really quick. Uh, I'm going to actually rash this layer really quickly. That way all layer styles work. Uh, that's not a bad one. If I just moved it up, right? That's I'm going to just move it up a bit, just up to the right or something like that, just so it's away from the blue. I'm going to take a rectangle marking tool. So this tool right here, this second tool, I'm going to make a nice long rectangle here. And I'm just going to have fun with this. I'm just going to press delete around places that gives it these this little green layer, right? A little more character. So we'll just do some here. I'll make another square just to do more little cuts like this. Something like that. And I'm just pressing delete on my keyboard. And you can see I'm just deleting these random spots to give this kind of like green, a uh, little like over overlaying like, you know, texture. Just a little bit more like character, like a cool little technical kind of feel I get from it. Uh, something like that. Something like that. Something like that. And I go something like that. That doesn't look too bad at all, to be honest. So what what this is is just creating a cool little like texture for me to do. And it looks like a plane coming outside. I don't know what the heck. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but what this is doing is just basically uh, putting a nice little texture on it. So we have this two little different tones of color, which looks really nice. And to be honest, if I want to do anything more, I can just go ahead and Control J really quickly, and I can just go ahead and go to Filter. Uh, actually, no, I can go to Dissolve. I can just lower my opacity down. And I can make like little, uh, like little, like I sprinkles inside that second thing that we just did. And I'm just doing whatever I want to right now. So I'm just going to have fun with that. Also, I can also change this color. I'm actually going to duplicate another layer. I'm going to control on this layer. I'm going to press control E. And I'm going to change this color really quickly. Because if I did, if I just try to change the color, um, without like, this is the, hold on, I'll show you guys what I just did. Because this is like one of those complicated things. Uh, I have this layer on dissolve, right? The reason why I made a new layer and merge it together is because I want to put this on a color white and lower my overlay. But if I lower my overlay while the opacity is on or my color overlay is on, if I lower my overlay like little thing right here, it will lower the uh, dissolve overlay well, like as well. So that's what like the whole dissolve thing is doing. I just want to make like little, little nice white dots around. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to merge these two layers together. That way this new dissolve layer is no longer a dissolve layer. It's just a normal layer. So I lower the opacity down. It's just going to lower the opacity of the layer. So you guys want to get what I just did there. It won't, you know, I just tried, you know, I kind of like backdoored the whole dissolve thing. But I'm going to put, put this on white. And I'm going to go ahead and rash this layer. And I put it on overlay. So now I have these cool little white dots around. Looks pretty cool so far. I'm not going to lie. Uh, what if, if Whatever you want to do, guys, make sure you guys do it. Uh, if you want to add a cool little, uh, I'm actually going to add a cool little effect that I did in my other thumbnail videos. Is if you want to take a picture, right? I'm going to take a picture. Drag it below the text and stuff, right? I just took a random Call of Duty 3 or Black Ops 3 picture here. Make it a little bit more bigger. Uh, if you want to have cool, like, you know, this actually works really well. That's how, like, simple this is. Um, cause just because the colors match with the, like the background or whatever, uh, this, this is actually a really cool, simple way. I don't, I didn't mean to do this. I swear to God, I didn't have this planned, but the blue and the green, these little two little things that we did before, or these three things that we did before, right? Uh, looks really good with this thumbnail. Just keep that in mind, you know, just simple stuff like that works. Um, if I put this new layer, right? Or this new little photo here on either luminancy, uh, depends if you guys want it black and white. I'll uh, make more of a, like a lighter, like tone in the background or put it on overlay, which gives it like more of a darker tone. I think luminancy is going to work for me right now. 
I'm gonna lower my passing down maybe a little bit more, maybe like 25. Just enough to, I don't know, 30. We'll keep it on 30, why not? But what you can do is this is called like, I called it the, uh, what did I call it? I called it like the, the outline something effect or whatever. But what I did was I took the magic wand, which is W on your keyboard for the quick shortcut, right? And it's the second tool within the little W uh, shortcut here. And I pretty much I clicked in the picture and I'm gonna start clicking around with the picture holding shift. And I will have a video on this as well. This is like one of those videos I have in the description down below. And then pretty much it just selects the entire like, you know, these cool little dark spots of the canvas and kind of like outlines the, the picture really quickly. Very sloppy, but what you can do is if you make a new layer, uh, if you have the rectangle marquee tool selected, you can right click on the canvas now, go to stroke, and then you can just change your stroke color to maybe green. Press OK. Deselect on one stroke, right? You have these cool little green here. So look at that. I can just go ahead and just change the dissolve. I can have like some cool dissolve going with it, right? Make it look cool like that. That looks like pretty gosh darn sick. Um, if I change this other stuff, right? I'm just going to flip through the layer styles by like clicking on this, going through it with my arrow keys. Uh, I can have a darker outline, a nicer green outline, which is pretty badass. Uh, I'm actually going to probably go with the dissolve. I'm going to lower that down a bit. I'm going to do the same thing I did before, make a new layer just so I can have this dissolve layer as just one layer, right? Now we have this dissolve layer. I'm going to make a new layer above that dissolve layer, right, uh, right click, clipping mask to it. I'm just going to use my pen tool to make some simple triangles around it. And I can put a double color, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll just put some triangles around it, make sure we connect the layers, just something like this. Just like some finalization stuff, right? I have three little simple triangles. Right click on them, fill path. We'll use the color, what, like a light blue? Something like that, right? Press OK. And then with this, now you can see blue. But actually, I don't know. What if I just change the color overlay? We'll go through it. Oh, that looks pretty good, too. So it has two tones in the background. I don't know. You have fun with this, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Don't forget, guys, 200 likes on the video equals a single down below. I will put a nice little cool preset of thumbnail for you guys to use. Um, other than that, please just give me any other tutorial, uh, tutorial ideas that you want to see. Uh, even give me ones that I probably would never do, uh, that you think I never do, but I probably upload them on Mondays. You never know. So, like, a lot of my Monday uploads has been, like, some of my best uploads, like, for the past, like, three weeks. I really, really appreciate that. All, all my uploads have been doing really, really, like, in fantastically good. Uh, please don't forget to check out my Selfie, selfie.com slash SMHQ for any, any pre-mates and packs. As well as, like, $5. Also, you can also buy my everything pack, which is $30. One purchase of $30, you get everything in my store. Currently, as well as any future products are emailed for you for free, no matter the price. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much. I really, 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 really appreciate it. I think we hit 45.6K, so we're almost to 47K, uh, or 46K. So, thank you guys so much for that. All right, cool. I'll talk to you guys later. Enjoy your Monday and the rest of your week, and I'll see you guys on Friday. Peace.